Hi, welcome to this next reflection by Southern Counties Baptist Association. Colin, Claire, Dave, Amy and Alison all send their regards and love to you as always. I brought you down here to Stoke Park Woods, which is uh, really just my backyard. It's just a quarter of a mile from my house. Uh, partly so that you can see some of the trees around us and the autumnal view. I'm not a great fan of autumn. My, my wife loves autumn, but I'm not a big fan of autumn. Partly because the nights draw in, it gets darker, there's not so much light, um, and uh, the clocks go back, and generally the weather is pretty poor. In fact, I must admit to you, the other day I got up and I was pretty grumpy. The weather was bad. And also, it had just been announced that we were going into a second lockdown. As I met with the Lord that day in my prayer and devotion, one of the verses that came to me was the verse that is written in Philippians 4, verse 4, where Paul writes to the Philippian church, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. I felt quite chastised by Scripture, but also challenged by Scripture. And since then I've been thinking, what does that mean for us as Christians? When we find ourselves in a place of difficulty, when we find, our place in, 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 we find ourselves in a place of disappointment, how do we rejoice in the Lord? Philippians was written by a person who was in prison to a people that were facing suffering. And yet Paul was able to say to them, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I don't know about you, but if someone says to me, cheer up, particularly when I'm in a moment when I'm feeling pretty grumpy and fed up, I find that hard to receive. But when someone who is in difficulty, who's struggling, who's had a hard time, is able to be joyful, particularly when they say, because God is good in my life, I, I find that inspirational and motivational. And I receive that well. Gordon Fee, in his commentary on this passage, says this, Joy unmitigated, untrammeled joy is, or at least should be, the distinctive mark of the believer in Christ Jesus. I've met a good number of grumpy Christians. We should not be known as that. And it is a travesty when we are. Christians should be known of people that rejoice. Not that we ignore those that are in sorrow and sadness. In fact, we are encouraged to weep with those who weep, aren't we? And to lament with those who lament. And that is part of our scriptural calling on our lives. And it's right that we sense the suffering of people. But it's also right that we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. His coming, his living, his dying, his, his, his rising, his promise of eternal life his sending of his spirit, the fact that he is with us. And that trumps everything, does it not? That is a foundation, a deep well of rejoicing within our lives. That whatever we might face, however bad the day might be and however dark it may get, that we discover that in Christ there is joy. And therefore we might rejoice in the Lord always in every situation and circumstance. Paul's second imperative that follows on from rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice is that we are to be gentle towards others, to let your gentleness be evident to all, he says. You might be surprised for that, that following joy, but actually when you stop and think about it, there is an outflow of the attitude of our hearts. If the attitude of our hearts is one of grumpiness, then the outflow of that will be that we are defensive, that we judge others, that we might become angry with others. If the attitude of our hearts is one of rejoicing in who God is, what Jesus has done for us, that our focus is on him, 
and we are grateful for his grace, his mercy, his goodness and his provision in our lives, then the outflow of that is that we would be gentle towards others, that we'd be kind, that we'd be caring, that we'd be compassionate, that we would want them to experience the joy of God in their lives. In a moment of difficulty, in a moment of struggle, in a moment of trial, to be gentle towards others is a powerful witness of God's mercy and grace in our lives. So hot on the heels of Paul's two commands to rejoice in the Lord and to be gentle to all is this promise, the Lord is near. We could spend a lot of time talking about what exactly that means. But the truth is this, the fact that Jesus is with us by his spirit and also the promise that one day he is coming soon should both put a smile on our face but also motivate us and inspire us to be compassionate and gentle towards others. But it will also lead us on to Paul's next command, which is not to be anxious, but to offer all things in prayer and petition to God. So following that great promise of Paul that the Lord is near, Paul then encourages the Philippian church to not be anxious, but in prayer and petition, bring their requests before God with thanksgiving in their hearts. I've never met someone who has said to me that they find prayer easy, but prayer is that place of confidence. We can confidently step into the presence of God. We can confidently offer our prayers and requests and the things of our heart. And we can confidently leave them there. It would be unusual for someone to bring God their prayers and petitions and then leave with an anxious heart. As we bring our prayers, as we bring our requests, we can leave confidently knowing that God holds them, knowing that God has listened to them and knowing that God knows. And therefore, we need not be anxious. So Paul, as he encourages the Philippians to not be anxious, but instead to be prayerful, to bring their petitions, but also their thanksgiving before God confidently, knowing that he is God, then promises them that the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard their hearts and minds in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can take courage from that, that this peace of God that is miraculous but also strong can be upon us too. It's something that can't be manufactured by us or, or anyone else, but it is a gift of God, a miracle from God to us. But at the same time, it is strong. Paul actually uses the word guard, but it actually means garrison, something that is strong and solid and secure, that can't be removed or taken away. And this is the kind of peace that God brings to our hearts and souls. So may you know the peace of God that transcends all understanding. And may your heart and your soul, your mind, be guarded by our Lord Jesus Christ.